Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. In this tutorial, we're getting into Adobe After Effects, and we're gonna take a look at a pretty simple setup to create some awesome illustrated looking effects. Let's get into After Effects and get started. All right, so we're here in After Effects, and I've got this sample graphic put together, a couple different animated elements, but I think the best way to approach this is to do a full breakdown of just one of these elements, because they're all basically the same treatment, but this text layer kind of has all the bells and whistles, and I think once you see how that works, everything else will kind of fall into place. But we'll come back to this and touch on how all of this is put together, but the main focus will be on building this text and specifically on these two adjustment layers which take this very very simple animation just the soft linear wipe and give it this cool hand illustrated inky look and these two adjustment layers you can drop them over some pretty basic animations and get some really cool looking results all right let's take it from the top of the composition that has just a single piece of live type in here i'll first mention that i'm working at hd resolution this whole thing will work at different resolutions you could build this at 4k but of course it would mean just adjusting some numbers experimenting a little bit same goes for frame rate i'm at 12 frames per second i feel like the style works well with a lower frame rate to give it kind of that stop motion feel but of course that can be adjusted too and this gray background just for preview purposes but i'll mostly leave that turned on i think it's just a little bit easier on the eyes here all right, so there's no animation in here. It's just a piece of live text. The font is called Cheese Cookies, and I'm actually gonna make the text blue. I wanna make sure the way we set this up, it preserves the existing color of things. So let's first just get a little bit of animation going in here, just that transition in that soft wipe that reveals the type. Probably something you do with a mask in general, but let's make it simple and just use this transition effect, the linear wipe effect. I'll crank up the transition a little bit just so we can dial in a good angle. And I'm gonna leave this kind of diagonal like that, just roughly approximating the way a pen stroke would write on these letters. And I'm also gonna feather this out really, really far. I'm gonna take it up to 400. Part of what I wanna demonstrate about the setup is the way that it responds to soft edges and kind of semi-transparent things. So we'll go to the first frame, bring the completion up enough to hide everything, about 85, and hit the little stopwatch icon to set a key. Then let's go out to frame 40 and bring the completion back down. That automatically sets a key for us. And we've got this very sophisticated animation. Which brings us to adjustment layer number one. I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'll call it Smooth Alpha. And the first thing we'll do here is to create a little bit of an animated wobbly edge. So in the distort effects, I'm gonna use Turbulent Displace. And I've got some settings to put in here. I'm gonna change the displacement to bulge, the amount to three, the size to 40, and the complexity to four. And that gives us a nice irregular edge, but we do need to bring it to life with a little bit of animation. And what we want is for this evolution value to progress as we go. So we could keyframe that, but this is a perfect moment to use an expression. Expressions might seem a little intimidating if you're still getting your bearings in After Effects, but an expression can be very, very simple. So I'm gonna alt or option click on the stopwatch to bring up the expression editor and just write the word time. Then if I click out of here, that's just gonna use the current time in your timeline to give this evolution a number value. However, the number it's getting for time is always measured in full seconds, meaning it's taking one second to evolve just one degree. So what we need to do is just to amplify that value by making the expression time times 400. And that's it. So now for every second, we get 400 degrees of evolution forever, and it's just one less keyframe to worry about. All right, next we're gonna create that smooth inky edge. And it's really gonna be a combo of two effects. The first one, just a simple blur, a fast box blur, and I'm gonna turn that up to five. And the second is gonna be a threshold effect here in the stylize effects, but not just the regular threshold, I'm gonna use CC threshold. And that has a few more options because what we need is this option to apply it to the alpha channel. And what this is, is really just the blur and threshold combo. It's kind of an old fashioned technique, especially in Photoshop, but in this case, it's applied to the alpha channel. I am gonna make one adjustment to this threshold effect. I'm gonna fatten things up a little bit and just bring this value to 110. And that's partly because the next effect, which is gonna help us clean up these aliased jagged edges, is gonna choke things back in a little bit. And the next effect sounds like the exact opposite of what we need. It's also in the stylized effects. I'm gonna use the roughen edges effect because check this out. 
If in this effect I bring the fractal influence to zero, it removes all the roughness from the effect and it actually becomes a smooth edges effect and it helps to clean things right up. All right, so that is the first adjustment layer and here's something really cool about it. Let me turn this off for a second and let's drag another element in here. This splattered ink texture is from texturelabs.org, by the way, totally free to download. I'll include a link to that in the description. And what I'm gonna do is copy this linear wipe effect that's on the text. I'm just gonna paste the same thing onto this ink texture, keyframes and all, and that's the animation, right? Just these two separate things wiping on. But check out how this looks with this smooth alpha adjustment layer turned on. It takes everything underneath it and kind of glues it together into a single shape. However, since the text is blue and the ink splatters are black, we're getting some smearing together of the colors here. And what we need is for anything underneath this adjustment layer to be the same color. So I'm gonna select the text and just copy the color. And then on the ink splatter, I can use the generate fill effect and just paste that same blue color in there. And I really like how this effect can blend separate elements into a single shape like this, but it also works well for creating transitions. So check out this comp where all I've got are two words, one fades out as the other one fades in. And if I paste this adjustment layer in here, it gives you this nice little switcheroo magic trick, especially for quick transitions. In the intro of the video, I had a moment where it goes from the Texture Labs logo to the After Effects logo, and that was basically this simple. One thing fades out as the other thing fades in, combined with this 180 rotation, and then this smooth alpha adjustment layer kind of glues it all together. And then we can also get this nice highlight in here, which will be the next part of the video. Adjustment layer number two, the highlight, which I do have to say takes a few more effects than you might think, because we're gonna kind of build it manually, but that also makes the process a little bit more interesting, right? So let's get a new adjustment layer in here. I'll name it highlight. And the first effect I'm gonna use is the fill effect. And I'm just gonna fill with black. So ultimately we do want to preserve the color of this text, this blue color, but what I'm going to do is build this highlight in pure black and white and we'll actually end up setting the layer to screen mode eventually. But for now, fill with black and next in the perspective effects, the bevel alpha effect. And not a whole lot of options to customize it, but that's okay. I'm just going to bring the edge thickness up to 15, the intensity all the way up to one, and let's change the angle a little bit, maybe to about 50 degrees. So obviously that creates this highlight and it starts all the way at the edge of the letters. Now for this illustrated highlight effect, part of what we're going for is that the highlight is gonna sit a little bit on the inside of the letters and we get that nice outlined shape all the way around. So the way I can bring this highlight in a little bit is to use in the matte effects, the simple choker, and I'm gonna bring that up to seven and you can see that just cuts into or chokes in all of the edges. Now, since we're gonna blur this highlight and crank up the contrast, a few more things, it works out much better if we're just working in black and white and we don't have to worry about any weird stuff happening with this choked in alpha channel as well. So in the channel effects, I'm gonna use the solid composite effect and just composite this whole thing against black. All right, then next we're gonna create just a little bit of irregularity by applying the fractal noise effect and just two changes here. I'm gonna bring the complexity down to three and make it a little softer and change the blending mode to overlay. All right, then we're gonna blur the whole thing and start to smush it together with a fast box blur. And I'll set the radius to two. And after blurring it, it's gonna be the same approach as earlier. Blur it and then use a threshold. But this time I don't need CC threshold. I can just use the regular old threshold effect it's the same thing, right? Blur it, then crank the contrast all the way up with the threshold. Actually, now is probably a good time to switch the blending mode of this adjustment layer over to screen mode. And this adjustment layer is filling the entire background with black due to that solid composite effect. No problem, we'll take care of that in a second. For now, I'm just gonna adjust this threshold to pick up as much or as little of that highlight as I want. So maybe somewhere around 110 looks good. So that's the basic shape of the effect. Then we just need a couple of extra effects to clean it up a little bit. We've got this harsh aliasing, the black background, and also it's subtle, but there are some areas that are a little bit flickery where the highlight kind of pops on and off. So let's take care of that flickering first with, in the noise effects, the median effect. Median is like a very, very simple form of noise reduction. I'm gonna set it to three, and it does a nice job of just rounding things out a little bit and eliminating any unnecessary details. Then let's clean up the aliasing 
We'll do it kind of the cheap and easy way. I'm just gonna give it a fast box blur set to one and then use the brightness contrast effect. I do need to turn on use legacy and that allows us to crank the contrast up much higher. I'm gonna take the contrast up to 80. And finally, let's lose the black background. What I can do is use in the channel effects, the set matte effect, and that'll just reset the alpha channel back to whatever it was before all of these effects were applied. And there we have it, that is the highlight adjustment layer. So those are the two adjustment layers that I would generally be copy pasting into other comps and things but let's customize things a little bit and get into a little bit more animation here. So we're using linear wipe for the transition in, but let's give this a different kind of transition out and we'll create kind of a grungy dissolve at the end. So I'm gonna create a new solid just underneath those adjustments, but over the text and the ink splatter, I'll call it fade out and I'm gonna give it the fractal noise effect and I'll just crank up the contrast to 200% and then I'm gonna bring the brightness all the way up to get it completely white at about 130 and set a key on the brightness and then move forward a few frames and drag the brightness all the way down to black. And that just gives us this simple grungy white to black transition. Then I'm gonna set this layer to stencil luma, basically making it a luma mask and creating this dissolve out. Adjustment layers back on. And that's looking kind of cool. They're kind of turning into little ink puddles, but let's take it one more step. This uh, smooth alpha adjustment layer, we can always mess with some of these values. And if I crank up the fast box blur, it really starts to melt things into just bigger pools of ink. So what I'll do is set a keyframe with the value at five, which is where it started. And then as the transition happens, I'll key it up to maybe 20 or so. And actually I'm gonna right click and ease that keyframe so it kind of ramps in. And that creates a pretty subtle, but I think a more organic looking transition. All right, so we've got our animation and then I've got just a couple of little treatment and compositing tips that I thought were worth mentioning. The first thing is just a cool way to give this a little bit of a retro look. And that is if I drag a grungy halftone texture in here and I scale that to about the right proportion. And then I just use this as a luma mat for the highlight adjustment layer. And then we get this subtle halftone printed effect in the highlight. And the other things I wanted to run through are really more for compositing when you start getting multiple animated elements into one main composition. So let's say we have one central composition and we've got a green background in here and I'm gonna drag that text animation we just created in here and I'll drag another comp that has this heart animation. This heart animation is the exact same setup. Inside of this comp, instead of text, I have this little vector shape and it just kind of pops up, scales up from zero, bounces a little bit, and then I have those exact same two adjustment layers on top. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is create kind of this offset misregistered printed ink effect. It's actually a little Photoshop technique that we can apply here. For this text layer, I'm going up to layer and in layer styles, I'm gonna apply the drop shadow layer style. And then I'll make a few tweaks to it to make it white. So I'm gonna set the blending mode to normal, the color to white, the opacity to 100%. And then I'm gonna bring the size to zero to make it nice and sharp. And I also need this layer knocks out drop shadow, I need it turned off. And then I'm gonna set this entire layer to multiply mode. And the cool thing about using the drop shadow layer style as opposed to the drop shadow effect is that even though the layer is set to multiply, the drop shadow still has its own blending mode and is set to normal. So we can keep this white, but then get these little slices on the edges that have that multiplied look of overlapping ink. I'm actually gonna copy this whole layer style and paste it to the heart as well and set this layer to multiply. And then maybe I can change some of these values, crank up the distance a little bit on this one and change the angle. All right, then to really sell it, we'll get a little bit of paper texture on top and I will just set that to screen mode and maybe bring it down to about 50% opacity. And then finally, I'm gonna put what has kind of become my default adjustment layer on top where I give everything a little bit of Gaussian blur. I'm gonna go a little heavier on this effect and set the blurs at three and then sharpen it right back up again with an unsharp mask with the amount up at about 150 and the size at 1.5. It's a subtle effect, but I like how that gives everything just a little bit of a lo-fi treatment, especially with this um, kind of retro aesthetic going. 
So that covers the basics. Now, when it comes to a more complex animation, or at least more elements in here, it's really the exact same thing happening. This, um, well, this background actually doesn't have any effects. It's just masks on a circle. But these sun rays, this is just a vector element that has a feathered out mask revealing it and another feathered out mask to transition out. And actually, these shapes are not even thick enough to pick up the highlights. So it's effectively just this smooth alpha adjustment layer. Then this design club text, this literally just fades on and fades off. And these two adjustment layers are doing all the work here. Now, I will point out that the way I approached this animation wasn't to start from scratch in five different compositions, but rather to kind of sketch out the overall layout, the overall transitions in and out. And that looked something like this. So no pre-comps here, just these elements with some various masks and fades and whatnot. And then I pre-comped each of them, applied these two adjustment layers and kind of refined the transitions in and out once those effects were applied. So there we have it. Took a few minutes in the video here just because I wanted to try to explain all the details, but this setup really is super easy to build. I hope you guys will enjoy experimenting with this. I'll include a link to download any of the textures or vector elements I've used here. That's all gonna be at texturelabs.org, which is just me running the site. It's not a big company or anything. It really is just made possible by the good people who have supported Texture Labs on Patreon. So hello and thank you to my friends on Patreon. If you find the Texture Labs project useful, please consider supporting it over there. In any case, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.